First thing I want to do is just look at some basic differences here because a lot of people that the emails that I got have asked, you know, why are they so much better? This and that and the other. First, you have to know what you got. This is the best way to do the comparison. This is a set of pro comp heads, stage four, that I'm almost through porting. Matter of fact, these are the pro comp 190s for, for the Denmark guy. Uh, with a 1206 Fel Pro. This is the old school. This is the LS3. Unported, untouched. Okay. Number one, the most obvious difference, look how the ports are spread apart. Basically, Chevrolet, a few years ago, finally gave in and said, you know what? Ford had the better idea. Ford did have the better design. By spreading the ports apart, it got rid of a lot of problems, got bolt holes out of the way. Mainly what it did on the exhaust side was get rid of a heat problem by the two ports being close together. A Siamese port will not beat this spread port design. It just ain't going to happen, okay? That's the first and most apparent thing. Now, we get past that because, you know, Ford and Chevrolet have been running, battling each other in NASCAR and drag racing for years. But let's look at the real difference here, the real McCoy. Look how tall up the bottom of the port is from the deck surface of the head. On the LS3, look at the difference here on pretty much every Chevrolet head. I got it drawn up on the board. Let's look at some math differences, okay? Now, what we got here, um, right here, pretty much a quarter of an inch. And this is going to be the Pro Comp head, the 186 double hump, the TBI throttle body head, the 882 Chevrolet head, all of them fall in that quarter category. They're going to be right there at 250 from the deck surface of the head to the bottom of the port. Now, look at the LS3. One inch, 340 thousandths from the deck surface to the flange. They've elevated the runner. Funny coincidence, guess what the 18 degree Chevrolet had back in the uh, early to mid 90s and then what was called back then the SB1 and SB2. All of them had elevation heights right around an inch and a half, inch 400. So they borrowed race technology. They brought it up. Now, bringing it up changes the angle. We'll get into all that another time. But look at this major difference between the two. That's just going to make it that much easier for the air and fuel to turn to go into the bore. Now let's look at something else. Look at the width. With me porting the Denmark guy's heads or the Pro Comps, moving it as much as I can with a sonic checker, I end up with a width of an inch and fifty thousandths. Hell, fire right out of the box. These are one, two, five, six. You, it's hard to get that number with offset rocker arms. I think with a set of Jessel offset rocker arms, welding the old small block heads, putting it in the block, cutting the meat till the push rod can barely clear it. The number that sticks in my head is 1,350. So we're a hundred thousand shot with a stock head of, of battling the width of a full-blown uh, $1,200 offset rocker, $600 set of lifters, uh, Jessel setup or T&D shaft setup on a high dollar Brodex head. So it's not hard to see the comparisons right here. Now, when we got this major width advantage, a major height advantage, yeah, it begs the question, why would you even fool with this stuff anymore, really? I mean, if you're going to build a motor nowadays in this day and time, uh, you know, the LS1 craze is just about over, but they're going to the 3. The LS3 is probably going to be the go-to head with Chevrolet for the next 5 to 10 years. There's, there's just no doubt about it. Okay, so now we see what major differences we got. Now I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to stand the heads up. Let's take a look at some combustion chamber thoughts here and see what we got. All right, I'm going to come on in close now. 
All right, what you're going to see right off the bat, okay, I'm enlarging this to 205. It's 202 stock. Know what them are? Right out of the box is 216. 216 valve diameter. Here's the other amazing thing. They've done this, okay, with a 4 inch, I believe, 406 over, a 60 over. 350 block. Well, that's the same diameter as what this is going to be. Now, how did they do that? Well, simply by taking the exhaust valve, which if you look right here is almost touching the chamber, they shifted. They moved it over, shifted it, and gave this that much more room against the chamber, which they should have done, and moved this out of the way. Just in other words, Let's say it's positioned here, they went boom and moved the whole thing over to unshroud the valve and also undo and get it because the exhaust really don't matter if they shove it up against the wall anyway. So they got a better chamber shape. The other thing is the valve inclination angle. Uh, haven't checked yet, not sure, but I can obviously look at this. This is 23 degrees. I'd say this is probably... Um, on in the neighborhood of 20 degrees or lower. It's, it's something like that. I mean, you can tell because it ain't got as much depth in the chamber. Might be wrong on this. I don't know for sure, but it sure looks it from where I'm standing. Okay, so just right there, it, that, that this head has already come with a valve size that large in its stock. Now, on this build, as far as I know at this moment right now, we're using the stop valves that come out of the heads. They've also lightened them up. It's a 5 16 valve or 8 millimeter, I guess that's what they want to call it, uh, valve. So it's going to be lighter. That's a good thing. Valve spring pressure is, is you don't have to have near as much spring pressure with a lighter valve. So, uh, but 216 valve diameter, I think that there's several companies making a 218 valve. I've tried to get one through one company. They're sold out of them right now. I might, I might try. I know I won't enlarge the exhaust, but the intake side, I might try to grab a little bit. Not so much as for valve diameters, but to get me a little bit better radius here and a better kick. So, looking at the combustion chamber, it's obvious. This one's way better. It's got a high quench design in it right out of the box. Now remember, this is an aftermarket head and it's better than anything GM made. Look how it's almost got like a figure eight shape to it. See, they're quenching. They're doing more quenching and in space that's not needed, they're getting rid of it. Also, look at the spark plug location, okay? Look how far up that the old 23 degree heads are. The chain, the spark plug's way up there, almost near the deck. Look how they took it totally out right there and put it down inside between the two valves. This head just spells horsepower ready to be made with it right out of the box. And now, this is what I call one of the biggest kickers between the two that there is. That is absolutely awesome. Let's get on in there. I'll get these top two, try to get them in there good. All right. If you look at the height between here and here, it's deceiving. I can take my finger and I ain't even to barely the first joint in my knuckle and I've already touched the seat. Man, I have to go way deep in there. Look at that, almost knuckle deep to get it to clear. It's got a beautiful roll in the short turn, which means that the airflow is going to be balanced out. Whenever you've got on a short turn radius a distance of say an inch here and then two inches of travel here. If you took a string and followed the floor here, followed it on the top, what that's going to create is two different air speeds. That's why they raised the runners up. But on this here, they've done an excellent job getting that straightened out. And I'm going to really be able to raise it up pretty good and with the work I do to it. So you've got almost as good an exhaust as you do an intake with the LS. Now, that being said, I just wanted to, to give you some basics. I'm not really going to go much deeper than this because there is a lot of other things to it too. This is what you need to know what I've just told you. 
so that you understand why the LS's are taking over. It's just, they're, they're giving you such a better starting point. The junkyards are full of LS1's now. That's what's really popular, which I wanted to start with an LS1 and then go to an LS3, but just how everything came about, I wasn't able to do that. As I mentioned, we are going to do the LS1, but we're going to go ahead for the purposes for the customer and do this three right now and, and the manifold. So I guess I've showed you the differences between them, what we're going to be working with. So let's take this one to the side. This one's almost done anyway. I'm on the about on the edge out of this thing right here uh, this week. And we're going to go full bore uh, probably around midweek and go right into the, the LS. So let's go ahead, get the heads positioned, and let's talk about how we're going to set this up. All right. 